Hello, my name is Lachlan and welcome to my booktube. If you're new here and you like bookish videos, you should totally consider subscribing. Today's video is going to be a wrap up of all the books that I read in November. Um, I know this is pretty late to do wrap ups, but I am always late for my wrap up. So that's nothing new. So I read 14 books in November and I had so many five star reads. I didn't have that many two star or three star reads. So yeah, I'm excited to talk about these books. So I'll go from low to high for star ratings and I didn't have any one stars. So my only two star rating, I'm very conflicted because it was a good book, but it just like wasn't for me, you know what I mean? So I, I just like couldn't really enjoy it all that much. And that was The Darkest Temptation by Daniel Lurie. I know a lot of people that absolutely love this book and it really is a good book. It's just not my, the trope in it wasn't my thing. This is the third book in the Maid series by Daniel Lurie, which I freaking love that series. I didn't really like the female main character. I liked Ronan, but again, I just didn't like the trope. It has a Stockholm Syndrome trope and I just wasn't vibing with it. Also, if you can hear music, that is my neighbor who is having a party right now and they have a DJ and it's really loud. Anyway, okay, it just was not my favorite, but I know a lot of people who's this, this is their absolute favorite. So if you like the Stockholm Syndrome trope, then you'll probably freaking love this book. I highly, highly recommend the series for Mafia Romance. So even though I gave it like two and a half stars. I'm still recommending this book because like the series in general is just so good and I'm so excited for the fourth book. Yes, there is going to be a fourth book and I cannot wait. So the next book I have to talk about is a three star read and that is Luck Every Door by Riley Sager. This is the first Riley Sager book I ever read and I don't know, I just didn't really like vibe with it. This one follows a character who moves into like this apartment building to watch the apartments and she gets paid to do it and some freaky stuff goes down and it's just kind of like a little bit creepy and a little bit like I wouldn't say suspenseful but it's kind of like got like this mysterious vibe to it and that's that's all I'm gonna say because I feel like it's good to go in blind with these kinds of books um, I will say I love 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 the cover and this was my first book of the month book that I ever got so I probably will keep it just for that. <laughs> I guess you could say it was like a slow burn when it came to being a thriller. It was a decent read. You know, I didn't like hate it or anything, but it did take me probably like a month to get through just cause I wasn't like crazy about it or anything. I don't know. I just thought the end was lackluster, but again, I think this is like Gabby Reed's one of her favorite books and that's why I read it. I'm not knocking her taste in books or anything. It just wasn't for me, that kind of thing. But I did give it three stars. So I thought it was good. I liked it. I just didn't love it. So the next three star book I have to talk about is Pretty Reckless by LJ Shen. And this is probably more like a three and a half star book because I really did enjoy it. I just thought um, the main character was just so, I don't know, I just couldn't like relate to her or anything. She was definitely an anti-hero. This was definitely childhood best friends to well, I don't remember if they were best friends, whatever. Childhood friends to enemies to lovers. Daria, the main character, I just found her to be kind of a horrible person and I couldn't really empathize with her. I just thought she was, I don't know, it was like first world problems kind of thing. Also, the, the writing at times was a little bit cheesy and yeah, I just, I, I did like it. I did really like it. So that's why it's like probably a three and a half star book. It's just not my all time favorite and I'm 100% reading the next two books in the series though. My neighbor's music is so distracting. It's so loud. Okay, so yeah, also I really liked Pen in this book. I freaking love the covers of all of LJ Shen's books, to be honest. They're so pretty. And then the spines are really, really pretty. So yeah, that's uh, Pretty Reckless by LJ Shen. And then the next two books I'm gonna talk about are either three and a half or four stars, but I do remember really, really loving this one, Origin by Jennifer Armentrout. So I read Shadows and then I read Origin. This is the fourth book in the Lux series. I really did love it. I have a hard time rating them so high because they're so, so cheesy, 
but I really did enjoy them. One of those like, I wouldn't say guilty pleasures, but they're just so comforting. There's something about them that's comforting. Wow, that music, I literally, they do not want me to film today. Okay, anyway, yeah, so this is um, a young adult, like alien sci-fi fantasy kind of deal. And it's light on the sci-fi, which I like about that because I'm not big on sci-fi. So if you're looking for like a fun young adult series to binge, I would recommend the Lux series. It uh, was written in like, I don't know, Twilight era maybe. I think it was written after Twilight, but it's kind of like, the, it's, it's way better than Twilight in my opinion. Now, Twilight is great for the nostalgia. Um, I really like the first two books in the Twilight series, but um, this is like a solid young adult fantasy is all I'm going to say. Um, it's got romance, it's got like, a, it's got a good plot to it and it has like plot twists and it has emotion and I don't know, I just, I really love the series so I've been reading it a little by little and yeah, I'm trash for Lux series so I think I'm going to go with four stars for these. I've made up my mind. They're four stars. So next up we have another sci-fi and it's going to be a four stars. This one is super, super heavy on the sci-fi and that would be Aurora Burning. This is the second book in the Aurora cycle. It was really good. It was just super, super, super sci-fi. I have pretty much read this series for Squad 312. The friendship group is freaking everything. I think if you're not a big sci-fi reader, a lot of the terminology will go over your head if you're anything like me. I have a hard time picturing some of the visuals and the imagery basically, but it's still really good. I did do a lot of tabbing, so that's really fun. I will definitely reread the series one day and hopefully understand it a little bit more because honestly, I could tell you about the friend group, but I couldn't tell you like the world building. It's so confusing to me. So much goes over my head and I'm like, I have no idea what, what just happened, that kind of thing, but I love the friend group. It's everything. So now I'm just gonna go through my pile of five star reads from November. I have a lot of them. So we have The Keeper of Night. Now this is a dark young adult uh, fantasy with Japanese folklore in it. This was also the book of the month choice for November, I believe, but I ended up purchasing it on Amazon because I don't know, I'm like that. I did a ton of tabbing, like so much tabbing. I can't even describe how much I loved this book. I have a full review on it as well as like a part of a reading vlog. So I'll link those below. Now I watched Read with Cindy <laughs> review this book and she completely like tore it apart. I really love Cindy. Like I've always watched her YouTube videos. She like always hates books that I love and I love watching her like hate on books that I love. I don't know why, I'm like a masochist. Anyway, so it was like painful watching her <laughs> tear this apart because I loved it so much. But she has really valid opinions, just like things that I'm like, I would never think about that. Like I'm not that smart. So my simple minded self loved this book. I thought it was freaking amazing. I love the characters in this book and the world, like the imagery, it was super, super dark. And yeah, if you want to know more about this book, go watch my full review um, because I've talked about it, I feel like, so many times on my channel now. And I just, I loved it and I cannot wait for the next one. Kylie Lee Baker is a debut author and I just thought it was phenomenal. So I gave it five stars. So the next book is, was a reread. And this is uh, House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J. Mass. I reread this. I have a full review on it where I talked about like my favorite quotes and you know, why I cried a million times reading this book. This book is so tabbed. I'm like, yeah, there are a lot of tabs in this book. Let me know if you guys want me to do like a how I annotate um, my books because I wanna do one of those, but I don't know if anyone cares. So maybe I'll just do one anyways. Okay, anyway, so yeah, if you haven't, heard of House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J. Mass. Um, this is like, think of Akatar meets Criminal Minds. It's basically like a fantasy meets true crime and it's 
epic. It's amazing. The first time reading it, there is a lot of world building. There's some work to be done when you first start this book, so don't pick it up thinking it's going to be like easy breezy, lemon squeezy, that kind of thing. Like it's, you have to do a lot of thinking and putting things together. So, but it's so worth it. Like I cried so hard the second time reading this because I knew what was coming and I just, you know, the first time I, I definitely cried, but the second time I just kept crying. Like I never really stopped crying. So there's that. I'm so excited for the second one. I cannot contain it. This book is amazing. It follows Bryson Hunt and a lot of people have an opinion on whether or not Bryson Hunt are going to be endgame because we know how Sarah likes to switch things up. And if you've read her series before, like that's all I'm going to say. She likes to switch things up. So yeah, five freaking stars for this book go read it. And then we have one of my all-time favorite books, another all-time favorite book, which is The Maddest Obsession. I, mm, like, this book is everything. I have a whole review on it, so go check it out if you want to hear more. But, like, this is the second book in the Maid series. Yeah, do you remember the one I was, like, trashing earlier? I feel so bad because, like, I love this series, but that one wasn't for me. However, this one knocked my freaking socks off. I think that's partially why the third one like didn't hit as hard because this one, you guys, I can't even describe the love that I have for this book. It's just so amazing. Oh my God. Christian is, he's so good. I will reread this book 100%. Um, I did end up tabbing it. So that's quite fun. Amazing. Highly, highly recommend. If you want to dip your toes into mafia romance and you like dark romance, stop what you're doing. If you have Kindle Unlimited, go download this. If you don't have Kindle Unlimited, go buy the heart, the paperbacks, like whatever. It's so good. And this gets like six out of five stars for, especially for the romance genre. Please do yourself a favor and go read this because there's a little bit of forced proximity that goes on this book. The main guy is a fed, like a federal agent or whatever. And the main girl, Gianna, is so funny. She is hilarious, okay? Literally one of my favorite heroines that I've ever read. So go read this. So then we have Addicted After All. This is absolutely five star read. This is, I think, the fifth book in the Addicted series because it's the last one. Yes, it's the fifth book. Um, so the Addicted series, if you're not aware of it, it follows Lily and Lo, who are addicts. Lily has a sex addiction and Lo is an alcoholic. The series starts off with fake dating and then it goes like into different tropes. But yeah, this is the fifth book and this book made me cry. It made me laugh. It made me scream. It's just, it's just everything. Um, this is technically like the last book in this Addicted series, but I've been reading the whole series, like the spinoff series, which is the Callaway Sister series and Tandem. So it's like a 10 book series uh, and it's a lot, but it's so good. Two addicts and one epic love story. That's what the back of the book says. And it's so good. So and next up is Heartbones by Colleen Hoover. I also have a book review on this. So if you want to hear, you know, in-depth thoughts on it, go check out that video. This book it is pretty much my new all-time favorite Colleen Hoover book, right next to Ugly Love. Ugly Love and Heartbones now share a special place in my heart because Colleen Hoover just is, I, I have no words. Okay, Colleen, we love you. You're everything. Keep doing what you're doing. Um, <laughs> Not that Colleen will ever see this, but you know, sometimes you just gotta let that out. I don't know what I'm saying. I did do some tabbing. Quite fun. I just freaking love this book. It takes place in Galveston and it follows uh, Bea, who mother, whose mother is like uh, an addict and she ends up moving with her father in Galveston and she meets Samson. It's a contemporary romance, so if you like contemporary romance and you haven't read Colleen Hoover do you even like contemporary romance? Cause like, what are you doing? Um, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, but like, seriously, go read it. Colleen Hoover is amazing. This book was amazing and yeah, five out of five stars. I loved it. Next up we have The Takeover by T.L. Swan. This book, you guys, an all time favorite. Okay, that's, it's seriously so good. Now the first like, 
probably 20% of this book, I was like, I don't know how I'm feeling. Because, so, so the heroine is a little bit older, which I end up really, really appreciating because she has a bunch of kids, right? And at first I was like, I don't really care about this lady's kids. But like, no, oh my God. By the end, I was literally sobbing from this book because I cared so much. I just cared so much. Like, I don't even... It was like I was living their life, okay? And I put myself in their shoes and I just couldn't help but like sob because she is a widow and yeah, she ends up, you know, meeting Tristan and oh God, it's so good. Now this is the second book in the Miles High Club series, but you really can read them as standalones. You really can, but the stopover is so good. I just know it's not everyone's favorite. People told me that the takeover and the Castanova were the best ones. My favorites are the stopover and the takeover. This is God tier, okay? This is an office romance and it's just so, so well. It's so funny. I really love T.L. Swan's writing. Um, not everyone vibes with it. I do, apparently. Like, I, I love it. The Castanova I did read um, this month, which is December, and I'll talk about that in my next you know, wrap up, but, um, I'll just say that, like, this one takes the freaking cake and is so good, like, all the emotions, laughter, joy, anger, all of it. Love, love, love this book, and I will 100% reread it one day. It's six out of five stars, so amazing. So, the last two books I have to talk about are actually mangas, and that would be Orange, and I'm not sure how to pronounce the author's name, so... This is a collection of mangas, obviously, as you can see, it's quite thick. So this manga series follows a group of friends, but specifically Naho is the main character and she receives a letter from her future self and it's about one of her, like, friends. And the letters talk about how she needs to save this boy from a certain thing and I don't know you just end up finding some stuff out and it's so good I cried a lot while reading this um I'd say the first one really like if you go on blind you'll probably cry I kept cr I just kept crying like a lot it's really emotional and I wouldn't say the series is like absolute perfection but to me it is I really don't have any like critiques for the series so that's why it gets like six out of five stars okay like it's so good um, if you've never read manga, start with this because this will kind of tell you, like, if you like manga or not. I don't know. Um, it's just, it's really, really good. It takes place in school. I don't know if it's like, it's not really slice of life. It kind of is, but not really. I don't know. Maybe. Is it shoujo? I don't know. Whatever kind of genre this is, I'll put it in the, like, title description down below. So freaking good. I just thought that the friend groups were really really funny. I just really enjoyed this manga and there is like a third installment which is called Future I believe. So I need to get that because yeah I binged these and really good. So that concludes uh, my November wrap up and I hope you have enjoyed it. If you made it this far, you can leave a little book stack emoji. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and comment down below if you've read any of these or what your favorite book that you read was from November or December since we're like halfway in December. So yeah, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. I didn't, so I'll, our, I highly, highly recommend this series for, for my, I highly, 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 I have a hard time <sighs> I have a hard time picturing yeah I don't know what else to say it follows Bryce Hunt Lily has a sex addict so next up we have